Hi everyone, welcome to Acres of Clay. I'm in the car with Kevin and Mackenzie, and today we are going to be doing some field checking. So um, Kevin's gonna check on the oats to see how far along they are, so to see you, if they have sprouted. Yeah, so out of curiosity, we're gonna go look and see where the oats are doing, um, cause they've been in the ground for 17 days and it's a neighbor's field but we haven't uh observed them yet just to see what's happening i just wanted to kind of just see a progress report as to how well they're doing yeah i think that's good so we're in the field here where we planted oats uh be 17 days ago so we're gonna i don't see nothing up so no sprouts, so we're going to grab a shovel and uh, see what we can find. This is soybeans last year. Yeah, soybean stubble. Soybean stubble. You'd think it'd be in at least some of the stubble here. Oh, there it is. Find it? Yeah. That little thing right there. See that green? Mm -hmm. There's one. Yep. So these, uh, I planted these oats at an inch deep and where the girls are looking right now looks like it's kind of where it just kind of get under some trash. So this is on a curve so it's going to be a little harder to find them here. So let's go up to where it's like a straight line. So right here is a run where the uh, drill made and uh, actually the ground ain't that cold, I was surprised, so. Last night it was, we woke up this morning, it was 18. So it was a chilly, chilly night. Oh, oh there right there. There's one and hoping to, oh, there's some more. Okay, so what it looks like here is the seed has got a I would say about a half inch sprout. And uh, oh, if we pull this apart. So it's, yeah, it looks like it's got a sprout. So that's about it. The root is just starting to go off here. Same with that one too. So good, we're making progress. It's been in the ground for, like I said, 17 days. So um, We'll see how long it takes to get out of the ground, but if that's a half inch sprout. So and that isn't emerging out of the soil yet. No. It's trying to find its way up. Light. Oh, that Kenzie found some. There's a couple there. So like I said, we planted at an inch deep and, and that's getting close. Yeah. So when it's cold like this and early, you want to plant light. You don't want to go real deep because um, it just helps it get out of the ground a lot quicker. Some guys like to go down to an inch and a half. And uh, knowing that it was early and cold, we, we decided to go at an inch. Some guys don't only do a half inch too. So, but this ground here is very, very good ground in our area. It don't really get wet and it don't really get dry. It stays. Um, yeah, it's well draining. It's well draining, it's just ideal dirt. So, but there's so the oats are coming along yeah they're coming along and uh we see we we they're talking several inches of snow tomorrow so yeah tomorrow. snow's good for well the old her generation they always said that a snow you want snow on oats make for a good oat and that's kind of the old saying so um i've always heard that old timers knew what they were talking about yeah and uh <laughs> This being soy stubble that I know tilled into, um, there's 50 pounds of available nitrogen here already. So uh, they'll put on a little more than that, but uh, it's got plenty of nitrogen to help get it going. And uh, When will they put more on? Probably the best is to do it when it's probably about a foot tall. Foot tall? Uh, yeah, six, six to a foot. Six inches six to a foot? To 12. So there you go. She's cold. Oh, it's cold. cold. It's third. It's in the thirties. We're in the car. We're waiting for dad because 
We just found out that my excursion has a flat tire. And he thought that we could take it. And we had to come rushing back home because mom said it was going to go flat. Dad said it wasn't. Guess who was right? Me. Who's right? About what? The tire. <laughs> Mom's right. Oh boy. He <laughs> does have a decent leak. But you're going to back up just a little bit. Then we. You're going to go forward. Go forward. Okay, you let me know when. Ready to go right now? Yep. Okay. How come you look so much tanner than I do? I don't know. Probably because you're. Hey, all Am I going forward? Yeah. are you doing all day today? So today, not a whole lot's going on. It's just cold and eh. And last night I tried covering some of the fruit trees. I'll show you what they look like. Most of my fruit trees are all well budded. And uh, we got down to, like I said, in the teens last night. So hopefully they're okay, but most likely we won't see any fruit this year. We talked to somebody that talks with a lot of fruit farmers here in Michigan and already saying that the grapes, the peaches, and the apples are most likely all a loss. So either fruit is going to be extremely expensive for us this year um, due to the lack of it, or I don't know, we just wait and see. Yeah. Maybe there just won't be any. Maybe there's, yeah, who knows. So it's always a risk, I guess. You never know. Every year is going to be a little different, so... Yeah. I'll show you what my fruit trees look like, though. Kenzie's just hanging out with me today. Well, I should go home. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all of a sudden boring here at our house. Mm -hmm. Because she has her own house to take care of and her own food to cook and her own laundry to do and so her own garden to grow. To and, as much. And, and she got baby chicks, too. I did. I did. Oops. I um, got 12 of them. 12 baby chicks. Hers are laying hen chicks. Mm -hmm. All different breeds. Yep. I got, I think, six different kinds. Six, wow. Six different so that's pretty exciting. And wow, she brings her own snacks even. <laughs> <laughs> that's something. It's actually from your kitchen. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> I don't have any snacks. No. <laughs> My fridge is bare. <laughs> Who wants to eat a pepper? <laughs> All right. Mom tells them you get fed. Yeah. Those are old, though. Nobody eats those. So. Oh, I'll take them all. <laughs> okay. If you ever come over... You can show them my chicken. I will. I'll show you guys Mackenzie's chickens and her... Veggie starts. She hasn't planted anything yet, right? Mm -hmm. You should probably plant your peppers if you're gonna go do that. I need to. I wanted to work on it today, but then I came over here. There's still time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I need to get my um chicken coop figured out. Yeah, she's gonna take her chicken coop that she built two years ago. Yeah. Maybe if I can find a video, I'll plug it in down below or up here somewhere. Um, but yeah, she built that chicken coop and so she was going to bring that to her house so that we can get it out of our yard. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah, but Seth has to build me a garden yet, so. He'll do that when the ground is workable and mm -hmm. warmer. And maybe we've got it. We're getting there. We're getting there. We oh, have a new set of tires for this thing and, um, we just got to get them on. My seat is already ripped enough. Yeah, it's okay if it gets ripped more. Mom, you I know. I need to get a puppy so that way you can have a full wind. Um, this wind. is what happens. We don't even have, we don't even let dogs in our car. But, but they just come right in. She's not a dog. She's just a puppy. She's <laughs> just a puppy. Hey, you gonna get up here? Come here. Nope, you need to come up, come up here and sit. <laughs> There's no room for her. 
What's wrong? <laughs> We're gonna try fixing it instead of replacing it. Oh, okay. We have to go do a little bit. We have to go to one more field. And he wants to try to see if he can fix it. So last night we went to a visitation at a funeral. I don't think they can hear you. We went to a visitation at a funeral. We went out to eat and. Pick something up because it's got three cuts. Three cuts? Oh. And the dog's in your car. Yeah, I know. Kenzie let it in. Sydney's getting ready to go to his other job, so he's all dressed up. He's got, you know, the farm job and then a real professional job. He's got a farm job and a mediocre job. Mediocre? Oh, no, no. So it's got three cuts, and you're going to try plugging all three? Yeah. Oh. I need to hold air about 20 more minutes. Oh boy. So there was nothing shoved in it, no it nail. It really there, there, and there. Oh, weird. I wonder what that would have been. Well, last night I was suspicious of some because I heard stuff, 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 stuff. I didn't. And, uh, but I would think as bad as this cut, it would have, air would have went out pretty fast. Yeah. Well, we had to hit something. So. Yeah. Working good. Yeah, we're not. I'm not driving this with a sidewall oh, plug. Yep. What you got? Head for my engine. This is the Ford uh, 6.0 yep. head. He had to take that out. What, what did you, uh, what? Have fun. Okay. <laughs> What'd you have to replace on it? Valves. They were a little bit bent. All of the valves? No, just these four. Oh. And you already replaced them? Yeah. Gotta whack the clips back on. Oh. Yeah. You need a little bit more weight. Yeah. Not quite. I wonder. Can you swap out the end for end so you get a little more bite? This one. There's a brute force. No, you can use a three, like a three pound sledge with this guy too, but you might have to. Wow. How'd you get that off? Uh, camera. It's a diesel. That was not supposed to happen, was it? No, that's fine. Oh. These are your little keepers. Oh, I see. I that's thought they you're broke. Try, you're trying to shove this whole assembly down far enough. To catch on the ridges, to catch on that. That's how far oh. down they gotta go. Stay, oh, that is quite a ways. Stay right in there like that. So, so you almost gotta push it down and whack it. So your towel's supposed to be holding the valve up, which it was not doing a great job. Uh, do you want a block? No, you don't want to scratch it. No scratching. Maybe a firmer something. <laughs> but but then you gotta get this down. You gotta put your body weight onto it. There it goes. Oh, there it goes. One done. So maybe the towel underneath helped. Yeah, so it, it keeps it from shoving down as you're shoving down. Well, I'm so close. So you might need to move it. I might. But it should be a nice clean click. And both the keepers, you gotta make sure they get in there because once in a while you get it where one doesn't. One does and one doesn't. Oh boy, the inspector's here! Ah. <laughs> <laughs> There's more than three. Uh oh. Guess he better change a tire. Give him a chance. Oh. oh. Okay. Oh, I heard it. Yay. Okay. 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 Okay.
Okay, have fun. Yeah, we were. <laughs> we're taking Kenzie's car since, since uh, yeah, flat tire, huh? we had the flat tire and it found four slits so far. Maybe even more if we kept looking. Ethan's going to work on it. Yep. What is Ethan going to work on it? I don't know. I'm going to when I get back. Oh, but we wanted to show you one more cover crop. Um, so Kenzie volunteered to drive. <laughs> And everything. I just watched it last night. Well, don't drive fast. And this will drive. It'll be fine. Hopefully, <laughs> Seth doesn't bite us. We'll gonna, never know. He's going to watch this video and be like, what did they do? <laughs> we drove through the field that we just hauled manure in with your car. Yep. So, we're in another field. And uh, this field here was uh, corn that we chopped off last year. If uh, my camera lady will scan the horizon but you'll see where the corn stalks are and if you look across you'll see the leftover what we did is no-tilled two different types of cover crop in here and uh hi Mackenzie <laughs> I thought I was seeing stars and it was just bugs it was bugs <laughs> so on this side to my left is rye they call it a cereal rye and then to my right here um this is called ryegrass. The variety is cold snap. This is supposed to be a more aggressive annual ryegrass that uh, we got sounds out there. Wild animal <laughs> sounds. <laughs> what wild animal are you making? <laughs> See, I told you she'd be good at entertainment. Oh boy. So, where were we? Ryegrass? What kind was it again? Cold we got snap. Cold, Cold snap. snap rye grass. All right. Okay, so this is an annual rye grass. It's the one time um, it goes through a. Uh, you plant it in the fall, spring. I mean, you only get one year out of it, whereas the perennial rye grasses you can get several years out of. So this here, the cereal rye, rye this is going to be. Um, we're keeping this piece and one other one. This is going to be for seed for this year and for straw. We'll harvest this with a combine. This here is just a cover crop that we're going to put under um, for green manure. So the seeding rate on this ryegrass uh, is 15 pounds to the acre. Um, Ron is getting a good picture of the rows there. And this here, I've been doing some research on it online, which I don't know. There's not a lot out there. But I always wondered what was the optimum height to put this under to get the most nutritional value out of it for the for the next crop and they say it's like flag leaf just before it heads out that's when you get the most nitrogen most nutrients the most out of it so that's what we'll be doing with this when it gets up probably 10 inches 12 inches we'll terminate it i don't know yet if we're going to terminate it with uh, a glyphosate or we'll just glyphosate glyphosate or we will uh, disc it yet i don't know so that's up in the air so now to the cereal rye, if you walk in here a little bit, um, this is a four bushel to the acre seeding rate. A four bushel? Yep, four bushel. So that would be about two, 230 pounds, 240 pounds to the acre. Um, we have a 750 no-till drill. So basically it's the meter all the way open to get this kind of rate on. I really like this rate because it gives us not so much more yield, but it really gives us a lot of straw, a lot of uh, material for the for bedding. So this here, um, being that we've had such a mild winter, it's actually stooled out quite well, mm -hmm. um, what Rondo is just showing. And we have uh, put some manure on this too. So probably I'm thinking in another couple of weeks, which would be getting close to 1st of Oct April, that we will come in then with some extra nitrogen too, probably about 50 actual units of N per acre. So, um, yeah. This is just one one of the cover crop fields. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is really looking good. I'm impressed with it. And uh, so yeah, hopefully, or should have a lot of straw and this should have yeah. a lot of uh, nutrition for the next corn crop. So, so you're gonna put corn back into here? Um, up to this right here. Mm -hmm. 
So this this half of the field will go back to corn and it'll be earledge corn. So so if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below about it. Tastes like cow food. <laughs> and because these uh Because we often eat our cow food. Yeah we You have to try it because you should try it. True farmers don't. Uh... I gotta try it. Yeah, you gotta know if it tastes good for your cows. A true farmer. That one has poop on it. Taste <laughs> test. <laughs> A true farmer pre-test is. It tastes like rye. It tastes like grass. It tastes like grass. Yeah. Actually, it's pretty good. Uh -huh. <laughs> you make all salad out of it. I yeah. know it. This is what mom eats. Yeah. Cow food. <laughs> I gave the chickens their sprouted grains. Been doing more sprouted grain than fodder lately. I feel like they eat that a little bit better. But um, I still do a little bit of fodder just so they can get some green nutrients. Um, but they really, really love the sprouted grains. And I have five little chicky turkeys. Probably can't hardly see them. They're so little. Mama's taking really good care of them. They they hide up in her feathers during the cold. And uh, yeah. Whoop. Looks like there's gonna be one white one and the rest of them will look like mom. This is my orchard area where I have apple trees, pear, um, nectarine, plum, and peach. And then one of my viewers sent me these bags, or these covers, and so I used them last night because it was really so, so cold. But I don't know if they, they really protect against that cold of temperature. But I was gonna take them off, see how they are. I'm gonna need two hands for this. This here is an apple tree. This one here did not have a cover. I don't know. This time will tell. All right, I protected this plum tree, but some of them have small, smaller buds, so that's good. This peach tree was protected. and see what they look like. There's the chickies. Look how much they've grown. I had to get a different water because the little waters that I was using, um, I was having to refill them all the time. This water here holds two and a half gallon and it just works better in here um, than the little itty bitty ones. And I'm gonna have to upgrade the feeders here shortly because once they get so low um, the feed in them then they get their heads kind of stuck in the hole. <laughs> they don't really get stuck but I noticed today one of them was kind of struggling to get it back out but yeah they all are doing well. I didn't lose any and um, Kevin put uh, kind of a soft winter squash in there one that was starting to get soft and they've been pecking at that. They're pretty excited about that. But everybody's doing very well and it's pretty cold outside so they're gonna have to stay inside a little bit longer. The hatching eggs, well they're not hatching for another seven days. So one more week in here. It's been two weeks. Um, they're all doing good, the ones that are in there. I did have to remove eight of them, I think. Two, four, six, eight. Um, and majority of them were the dark copper morans. And that was because those were not fertile eggs. Um, I candled them at day seven and then waited and candled them again um, a week later, I think, and there was no change. So. Uh, 
So I took them out and left what um, what I saw movement. I saw movement, healthy vein growth, and you could see like the little chicks inside when you candle them. So hopefully in about a week I will have about 14 chicks hatching. Um, so that's exciting. I will probably be doing another batch um, just because there's only 14. So I will probably do one more batch of 22 for this year. I don't know if I'll try any more of the Copper Morans. Definitely won't be trying as many as I did, but um, yeah, you just never know sometimes. Tonight for supper, I'm making some um, gluten-free meatloaf. I didn't have any quick oats up here in the kitchen, so I just put in old-fashioned oats and just kind of letting them soak for a little bit. Um, and that's gotta go in the oven here soon. I've also got these black beans been soaking for quite a while. These um, beans are black beans that I raised in the garden last year and I am going to can these because a couple nights ago I made um, a chicken fiesta type soup and it takes black beans and I used up all the black beans that I had canned previously so I need to can some more. Um, so I'm gonna do that this afternoon also. All right, I have the meatloaf in the oven and then I decided I better get working on my beans. And I got three different varieties of beans. The black beans are the ones that I raised in my garden. The other ones are just beans that I always have on hand. Um, I have pinto beans here. Whoops, and those are draining. I have pinto beans and I have great northern beans in this strainer. And I did not soak the pinto or the great northern. That was the kind of the last minute idea I had. I'm gonna fill my canner full um, and I think that's 22 pints, I'm not sure. But I'm gonna fill it full of jars of beans um, and I wanted to do a few different varieties because I am low on all of the beans. So I'm going to fill these. I only need to put a half a cup of the unsoaked beans. I've washed everything, but um, the black beans I was I the black beans I was soaking, so they've already swelled some. So I can add more than a half a cup, but I but I won't add more than one cup per pint if it's soaked. If it hasn't been soaked, I add a half a cup per pint. If that makes any sense. Then I just add some hot water. You can add seasonings or spices um, if you want. I'm not even gonna add salt probably to these because I like to just season them as I need them. Okay. I have 19 pints. That's what fit in there because I had some um, wide mouth. So can't fit quite as many wide mouth, but 19 pints in the canner. Canner's on, it's ready to go, and um, when everything is said and done, these have to process for 75 minutes for the pints, 90 minutes for quart. So we will see you back when they're finished. Here is how the beans turned out. I got um, 19 pints, so this should last us oh, a decent amount of time. And it saved me a whole bunch of money by doing this on my own. Of course, I raised these on my own, so that didn't hardly cost me anything. Beans grow pretty easy. Um, and this year, I this year I am planning on um, trying a few different varieties of beans to see how they do. But overall, I'm very happy. They have, they have all sealed, and I'll just. Let these set for about 24 hours before I take the rings off and label them and put them in the um, pantry.